Do you like greenery and a medieval atmosphere and flowers and vistas? Believe it or not, there are 66 acres of this stuff in New York City. Hello and welcome to Urban Caffeine. My name is Thea and in this video, we are going to go over a hidden gem in the world's most famous concrete jungle. Today, we are going to look at Fort Tryon. Plus, I'll tell you a really eccentric story of one of the earlier owners of this land. If you're not already in Upper Manhattan, you're gonna have to go pretty far north to reach Fort Tryon. But if you're aching for some nature and you're tired of the flavor of Central Park or other great green spaces around New York, this place is worth the trek. Fort Tryon is located in Upper Manhattan in the neighborhood of Washington Heights, specifically in Fort George. During the American Revolution, Fort Tryon was originally meant to protect Fort Washington to its south, which is now Bennett Park. But on November 16, 1776, the British won the Battle of Fort Washington and named Fort Tryon after Major General Sir William Tryon. As it goes, he became the last British governor of colonial New York. Fort Tryon is the fort that it is today because J.D. Rockefeller had purchased the land in 1916. The designers he hired were the Olmsted brothers, the sons of Frederick Olmsted, who was the designer of Central Park. I created another video that breaks down Central Park if you want to learn more about this world-famous park. Even though Fort Tryon is so far north of Manhattan, it is easily accessible by the subway with stations on both the north and south ends. With two subway stations flanking the park, you can get off at either end and work your way through the park knowing there's a subway station on the other side. But be aware that on the south end, there was some construction at the time of filming, so from the subway, you will be exiting here and the entrance to the park will be here. Fort Tryon is about three quarters of a mile long and a third of a mile wide. However, this place is hilly. There really are stairs after stairs. Don't underestimate the amount of stairs this place has. Make sure you wear comfortable shoes. If you just want to breeze through this area just to see what it's about, you can do so in about an hour to an hour and a half. But if you're traveling all the way north from anywhere outside Upper Manhattan, might as well spend some more time here. And there's plenty of ways to while the time away, especially now that spring is in full swing and summer is not too far away. Perhaps the most popular attraction on Fort Tryon is the Cloisters. The Cloisters is a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's called the Cloisters because the structure is centered around four cloisters. And a cloister is simply a covered walk. It has about 5,000 works of European art and architecture, mostly from the 12th through 15th centuries. One of the famous works on display is the Flemish hunt of the unicorn tapestries. Right now, admissions to the cloisters is suggested to be done in advance. You can do so from the Met website. South of the Cloisters is the Cloisters Lawn for lounging and picnicking. But this isn't the only area to picnic. In fact, there are a total of seven lawns in the entire Fort Tryon Park. On top of all the lawns, there are two gardens, a flower garden and an alpine garden. Heather Garden is a three-acre garden with over 550 varieties of flowers, trees, shrubs, etc. According to Fort Tryon Park Trust, it is the largest public garden with unrestricted access in New York City. The Alpine Garden was the first of its kind as a public garden when first constructed. In general, Alpine Gardens use rocks and stones to cultivate plants. The Alpine Garden at Fort Tryon makes use of the rocks from the excavation when Fort Tryon is being constructed as well as the subway tunnels near it. Linden Terrace is the highest point of Fort Tryon. 
It sits right in the middle of the park with an incredible vista of the Washington Bridge and the Hudson River with the New Jersey shoreline on the other side. Linden Terrace consists of a main observation deck with benches and public spaces. There's also a small terrace known as the Flagpole Terrace. From the Flagpole Terrace is a view of Washington Heights and the park. New Leaf is a restaurant and bar. However, since 2020, it closed and is seeking a new vendor. But this site has an interesting story. A person you must know is Cornelius K.G. Billings. Before J.D. Rockefeller bought this land, it was owned by Cornelius Billings. And he was a bit of an eccentric. In 1903, Cornelius Billings built a stable and country lodge around this area where the New Leaf stands now. And to celebrate the completion of this, he wanted to throw a party. At first, he wanted to throw this party at the stables, and you'll know why in a bit. But then he decided to throw it at Sherry's Restaurant, which was a famous restaurant in Midtown Manhattan at the time. He invited 36 people, and what made this dinner interesting is that they were all on horseback. That's right, they dined on horseback. There were these trays that were attached to the saddle of the horses where they were served dinner and they drank their champagne from a bottle in the saddle through a rubber tubing. And just so everything was apropos, the walls were painted with country scenery and country woodlands and the, the floor was covered in grass. This is known by the New York Elite Society as the Horseback Dinner. On the other side of the park is a dog run. Right next to it is a cooled gazebo. On the south end of the dog park is a permanent exhibit called the Columnade that's been there since the 70s. What would be a cool structure is the cottage. As of my visit, it was under construction. This is the main office of Fort Tryon. If you are in New York for the first time and don't have a lot of time and you just want to get your quintessential New York tourist things to do, I recommend saving Fort Tryon for another trip. But if you've been in New York for a while and need a palate cleanser, then I recommend grabbing a picnic basket and heading up north. It's really worth the trek. I have extra ambient footage of Fort Tryon on my Patreon, so check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tours around New York City. Until next time, happy New Yorking!